Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today I'm going to show you how you can copy a CSV file from Azure Blob Storage to Fabrics Lakehouse using Fabrics Data Pipeline's copy activity. And now, without further ado, let's fire up Azure and Fabric and let's see how this is done. Now we have the Fabric open. Let's first open up the Blob Storage and see that I have already created a container for us to use in this tutorial. In this container, I have uploaded one file called movies.csv. Now let's check out the contents of this file. We can see that we have the header, we have the film, year, rating, columns in this file, and then we have three rows. Those three rows contain some data. Now we would like to read the contents of this file to our lake house in Fabric. Let's open up the fabric and let's open the lake house that I have created for this tutorial. In this lake house, we have two sections. We have tables and we have files. And in this tutorial, we would like to copy the contents of this CSV file to the table section. So we would like to create a table from this file. And I have to note that there are multiple ways in the fabric how we can achieve this result. But now I would like to use the data pipeline for this work. So let's go to the home page and let's create a new data pipeline. And let's name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. And then we want to add a copy data activity to our pipeline and use that to copy the data from the blob storage to that lake house. First, let's name our copy data activity accordingly. Then we can open up the souls tab. And now we would have to create a new connection to our blob storage. And this we can do by selecting the new button here in the source page. And then we select the Azure blob storage and then click continue. And here in the connection settings, we have to configure a few things in order us to get that file. First, we have to input the account name or the URL. And here I want to note that all the blob storage names are globally unique. And that's why the fabric connection settings can then figure out the correct URL that we can use to access our blob storage. Basically, it will be the HTTPS and then the account name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. Let's copy our storage accounts name. And after this, we have to configure the authentication type that we want to use. And here we have several authentication methods that we can use. I'm not going to dive too much into these authentication methods, but probably my go-to choice out of these would be the service principles, since the managed identity is not yet available here in the fabric. But for the simplicity case, we are going to use the account key. That is kind of a bad practice, so I wouldn't recommend using the account key in this kind of a professional environment if you are building connections to a blob storage. But for simplicity's sake, let's use the account key this time. And now I can show you where you can find the account key. We can go back to our blob storage and then under security and networking, select the access keys. And here we can find the keys to our blob storage. I have to note that you shouldn't show these keys to anybody since that key would grant entire access to your blob storage. So you don't want to just spread these keys around. I'm not going to show you my key and I have already copied my key to elsewhere and I will grab that from there and use that to build the connection to our blob storage. After filling in the account key, the connection should work and we can create the connection by clicking the create button. Now the connection has been established and we can actually click the test connection button to see that it works. And our connection is successful. And now we can browse our blob storage and find our file. We can select the tutorial to source container and then select the movies.csv. And now we have to change the file type to delimited text since we have a CSV file. And since there are many possibilities for delimited text files to have different column delimiters or row delimiters or any kind of different settings, we could modify the settings for our files here. I already know that my file follows these default settings that Data Factory has defined here, so we don't need to touch these settings. But this is good to know if you have file that would, for example, have a different set separator than comma, you could change the column delimiter here. And now we can click the preview data in order us to see that we have configured everything correctly. And the data looks good, so everything should be fine what comes to our source. Next, we can move to configuring our destination. For the data store type, we want to select the lake house. And from the lake house list, we want to select the lake house that I have created for this demo. And since we do not have the table ready in our lake house, we, we are going to create a new table for this data. Let's call our table movies. And under the advanced settings, we can find two table actions. 
we can either append the data or overwrite the data. In this case, we would like to overwrite the data always. So let's change the table action to overwrite. Next, we can open up the mappings tab and let's do some minor configuration to our column data types. Because CSV files do not have any data types and everything is treated as string, this would copy all our data as string to our lakehouse table. But here we can do some tidy modifications and make the data types a bit better. The film column contains our film name that we can leave as string. And then the year we can set as integer because it's a year value and integer would work fine. And then for the rating we can use double since it is a numeric value with some decimals. So this would be quite good data types for this data. And now we are done with the mapping. Next we can debug our run and see what happens. Let's run our pipeline. And our pipeline already finished. And by clicking this activity name here in the list we can get more information what happened. We can see that we read one file and three rows and write one file and three rows. So it seems that according to this everything went fine. Now we can check out our lake house and see that there is a new table called movies and we can preview this data. And according to this preview everything looks good. So we have successfully managed to copy the contents of the CSV file from the blob storage to fabric lake house. If you found this video helpful and learned something new, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and Fabric content. Also, if you have any suggestions that you would like to see me cover in the upcoming videos, leave some comments to the comment section down below. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.